Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Med School Mondays with uh, Promo, aka Professor Mohan. That's me. In case I look a little different today, it's because the barber took away too much uh, hair from my beard. But that's okay because hair usually grows back. Unless it doesn't, then that's a different scenario, which we'll talk about in a future lecture. But anyways, what are we going to do today? We're going to talk about the parathyroid hormone. The parathyroid hormone is a very important hormone, but even before we get into that, I want to remind you guys, in case you miss any of the lectures from uh, the past few weeks, click on the links below and it'll take you back to the appropriate lecture. So like we said, today we're going to talk about the parathyroid hormone. I'm going to give you guys an introduction to uh, the functions of the parathyroid hormone as well as how is it regulated. We're also going to introduce you the uh, functions and regulation of vitamin D. So let's start off with talking about the parathyroid hormone. Some uh, basic anatomy, the parathyroid hormone, of course, just like the name suggests, is secreted from the parathyroid glands. You want to know for your exams now that there's actually four parathyroid glands, so don't forget that. So the chief cells are what actually synthesize and secrete the parathyroid hormone, so don't forget that as well. Once the parathyroid hormone is released and it finds its receptors, it's going to work through the cyclic AMP signaling pathway. Another, another important point that you can uh, definitely score those points on the USMLE Step 1 or any other board exams. Before we get into vitamin D, we're going to continue with our pathway with uh, the parathyroid hormone. So working over here, we're going to see that there's different functions of the parathyroid hormone. Over here, I drew a, a bone and I drew a kidney. Now, again, I'm not the best artist, but uh, hopefully you can see that that's a bone and that's a kidney. So what's going to happen at the level of the bone? The parathyroid hormone is going to increase the calcium resorption. It's also going to increase the phosphate resorption. So what's happening at the level of the kidney? A couple different things. At the distal convoluted tubule, right over here, it's going to increase the calcium reabsorption. At the proximal convoluted tubule, on the other hand, it's going to decrease phosphate reabsorption. So now the mnemonic makes sense. PTH, parathyroid hormone, is actually known as the phosphate trashing hormone because it's trying to get rid of phosphate. The third thing it does is also very, very important. It acts at the PCT, again, the proximal convoluted tubule, and it stimulates this uh, enzyme called 1-alpha-hydroxylase. Now, this enzyme is very, very important in the function and regulation for vitamin D. So we'll see that in a quick second when we introduce the topic of vitamin D. Before we move on to vitamin D, let's finish off by talking about the regulation. So as you can see over here, when we have a low level of calcium or we have a high level of phosphate, that's going to stimulate the parathyroid glands to release more PTH. On the other hand, what are some things that will decrease the level of PTH? Looking at this over here, we learned that magnesium is a very, very important mineral for normal PTH secretion. So if magnesium levels are low, it's going to lead to low parathyroid hormone levels. Now, what are some things that are going to cause low magnesium levels? There's diarrhea, alcohol, diuretics, and antibiotics. Now, how are you going to remember that? Well, just yesterday, it was Father's Day. So we have this nice mnemonic over here for you, dad, or even just uh, flip out the D and the A and you got data. So think about the dads who uh, drink alcohol, the, uh, you know, alcohol is a diuretic, so of course they're going to be urinating a lot. Um, let's see what else. Antibiotics, most dads don't like to take medicine. And of course, all that alcohol, some of these dads are going to get diarrhea. Great. Now let's move on to the concept of vitamin D. Vitamin D, as many of you guys already know, we got two main sources, the sunlight as well as the skin. Now this time, its signaling pathway works through a cytosolic signaling pathway. So keep these differences in mind. Cyclic AMP for PTH, cytosolic signaling pathway for vitamin D. Now vitamin D, how does that work? Well, first of all, we have this uh, inactive form that's produced in the liver, 25-hydroxy vitamin D. That form needs to be produced into an active form. So it's a two-step activation process. Again, the liver first, and then the second thing I drew over here is the kidney. So that's where this enzyme becomes very important. Parathyroid hormone is going to stimulate 1-alpha-hydroxylase in the proximal convoluted tubule of the kidney. That's shown over here. That's what converts the inactive form to the active form. The active form is known as 125-dihydroxy vitamin D, also referred to as calcitrol. Now calcitrol, what are the functions of calcitrol? Calcitrol is going to work on the bone, so it's going to do the same thing that the parathyroid hormone did. It's going to increase the calcium resorption as well as increase the phosphate resorption. What does it do in the gut, however? It increases calcium absorption as well as phosphate absorption. So overall, what you want to remember about vitamin D, vitamin D is bringing all the calcium into the serum and is bringing all the phosphate into the serum. Parathyroid hormone, once the calcium in the, once the calcium's in the serum and once the phosphate's in the serum, it's going to do its best to get rid of the phosphate and preserve most of the calcium. Perfect guys. 
Last thing, we just want to talk about the regulation of vitamin D. So of course, what's going to increase the level of calcitrol? We know that parathyroid hormone does it. And how does that do it again? It stimulates 1-alpha hydroxylase at the proximal convoluted tubule. And of course, when you have low levels of calcium or low levels of phosphate, it's going to go and stimulate more production of vitamin D. Now, what are some things that are going to decrease calcitrol? Of course, basically itself. So negative inhibition, once there's too much calcitrol, it's going to go back and uh, stop the production. That's it guys, that's it. Now that was parathyroid hormone for you guys and vitamin D. Next week, what are we gonna do? We're gonna talk about hyperparathyroidism. We're gonna see what are some of the implications of having too much PTH, ultimately meaning too much calcium in the blood. In case you missed last week's lecture, which was a discussion on thyroid cancers, click on uh, the link, it's gonna pop up in a couple of seconds and it'll take you back to that video. Until next week, what are you guys gonna do? You guys are gonna like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, share the video with your friends, and of course, leave me a nice comment below. So until next week, have a great week and we'll see you next Monday on Med School Mondays with Promo.